Thank you, Nancy. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this day of Pentecost. Um, it is a brand new season in the church. Today we celebrate the birthday of the church and the giving of God's Holy Spirit. And thank you to all of you who get bonus points for remembering to wear red, as red is the color for the, the day of Pentecost. So thank you um, for doing that. We also want to extend a word of welcome to those who are joining us via our live stream. We are delighted that you could be a part of our worshiping um, congregation today uh, via our live stream. So welcome and thank you for beginning this portion of your week with us here as we gather as God's people to worship. Um, one announcement about the schedule today and that is at 1015 we will have our last adult forum for the school year. Um, that will be downstairs in the youth room at 1015 this morning. Um, looking ahead this coming week, um, 7 p.m. will be the baccalaureate service hosted by the Hayfield clergy and the Hayfield churches. That will be at the West Gym of the high school, 7 o'clock on Wednesday. We look forward to being able to worship and honoring our high school graduating seniors. A couple of other announcements. Um, Friday, uh, this Friday, the American Legion is dedicating a flag at the villa. That is at 5.45 p.m. All are welcome. If you have any questions about that, you can ask Skeeter for more details about that. But all of, all of you are welcome. Also, I hope you had time to notice as you were coming into church this morning that the landscapers have been here and done their thing. It looks beautiful. Now we need your help. And that help is we're going to need people to water. Um, they put sod in and the plants and shrubs and trees all need water. Um, if we don't get any rain, it sounds like maybe this week we will, but just in case, it's very important now that we've done the work that we keep our plants in good optimum shape. Um, so we're going to be working on putting a sign-up sheet in the narthex. If you don't mind watering um, during the week, we will also send our volunteers a, a sheet that the landscapers gave to us on how often and what, if it's trees or shrubs, they're kind of different amount of water. So you will be able to know looking at that sheet. Um, but if you're willing to help water, don't mind doing that and have the time. We would love for you to join us and help us keep our landscaping looking really good. Um, so please talk to me or um, look for the sign-up sheet in the narthex. Um, finally, it is with sadness that I announced the death of one of our members. Um, Judy Stolk passed away. Um, funeral arrangements are still pending at this time, so please um, watch online for more details and more information. And we will try to pass those along to you as soon as we receive them. But we continue to pray for Judy's family as they mourn her passing. The rest of the announcements I leave for you to read as you have time. And let us begin our worship with a word of confession and forgiveness. I invite you to please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts and who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace out of love for the whole world. God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing together our gathering hymn number 401, Gracious Spirit, Heed Our Pleading.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, 
appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And, this, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? <clears throat> Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, oh, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit among all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends that reading. We will um, sing, or song, no, we're not going to sing. We're going to say the psalm responsibly. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms to many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and the Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you ride your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in, <coughs> rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the spirits, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption and redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope is now hope that is seen is not hope, or who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Thank you, Kathy. I invite you to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now that nicer weather has arrived, perhaps your thoughts have begun to turn to plans for vacation and anticipating a time of summer leisure. For you, that might mean taking a trip up north, fishing at the lake, or perhaps traveling to national parks around the United States. Or maybe even doing a staycation and catching up on those things that you have neglected at home. Whatever your plans might be that you are looking forward to, we all know as Minnesotans this is our favorite time of year. Often a key part of summer months is gathering around the campfire. I can remember as my as a youth that the favorite part of my Bible summer camp experience was a campfire that we had each and every night. We sang both goofy and prayerful songs. We roasted marshmallows. We laughed. And we enjoyed seeing the glow of the flames light up the starlit sky. But have you ever noticed how difficult it can sometimes be to start the fire? In fact, last fall when our confirmation class went to Gooder Village, it had rained on and off periodically through the day. And so that night when we sat down to start the campfire, we discovered that was far from an easy task. We literally grabbed any paper or cardboard we could get a hold of, including the Hershey bar box that they came in. We gently blew, trying to fan the spark of the match into flames. Finally, after much patience and perseverance, the small spark took hold, and soon a blazing fire burned in our midst. Today in our readings from scripture, we see about the spark, and we hear about the flames that ignited the birth of the whole Christian church. It started off small, 
Just a few disciples really gathered in one place. But then the greater crowds, they heard the roaring of the wind and suddenly tongues as a fire appeared. Fueled by the wind and by the fire, the disciples began speaking in strange tongues, each in their own language. The crowd saw that something unusual was happening and they were drawn to those flames. It was these events of Pentecost that fired up the hearts and the minds of people and began what we now call the Christian church. Who would have thought from the events of this first Pentecost how those flames would spread and the Christian church would grow to include millions and millions of believers throughout the world? What's really interesting to note about the events of Pentecost is who started the fire. The disciples didn't. They were just there, not knowing quite what to do because Jesus had told them to wait until they were clothed with power from on high. No, it wasn't the disciples. It took someone far wiser than they to ignite them and to set their hearts aflame. Who has that power? God does in the form of the Holy Spirit. And isn't it amazing what God has the power to do? God sends us the Holy Spirit and the fire at Pentecost. And wow, what a great thing. Because sometimes in our lives, we realize we can't do it alone. Sometimes in our lives, we feel like ashes. Times when even a flicker seems like it might be beyond our capabilities. But that isn't so with God. The God who sent us Jesus now sends the spirit of the risen Christ, the Holy Spirit who ignites our hearts and emblazons us with power and with energy. And who knows? Who knows what might come from that spark? Who knows where that fire within might lead? For today is the day that God is fanning the flames within each of us. And he will do that until a new fire appears, burning brightly within us, taking on a life of its own, giving off warmth and light to all who draw near. God will do that because the love of God never is extinguished. It keeps on burning brightly, spreading its light and its warmth until it touches everyone. This is the good news of Pentecost. But there's even still more good news to the story. I can remember back one of the times my own family had a campfire out at our farm. It started off small, just a couple of us in the family. But you know how it is in rural areas. Eventually, by night's end, we became more than 40 people gathered as neighbors and friends saw the fire and dropped by for a visit. It grew to be a neighborhood social event. This, too, is the story of Pentecost, for it is the work of the Holy Spirit to draw the people together into community. Even in the book of Acts, it says that a crowd gathered and they were amazed, and they were perplexed at what they saw, because they saw the fire, and they saw what it can do. They saw uneducated disciples suddenly speaking in new languages. They saw shy, fearful followers suddenly turn into apostles of Jesus, boldly and publicly proclaiming the word of God. They saw the fire and what it could do. And by the end of that first day of Pentecost, nearly 3,000 people in that crowd were baptized. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty awesome and also a little unnerving. For most of us, the call to be that bold and to try to speak new languages well, I don't think it's a stretch to say that that might be way beyond our comfort zones a lot of the time. But remember here, who started the fire? 
The disciples didn't. On their own, they could not. But God did. And because God did, those fearful followers became empowered. Their faith was ignited. And they were able to boldly proclaim the wonderful things that God was doing. That, too, is the good news of Pentecost, that God does for us what we cannot do on our own. And people are drawn to that fire. I want to close now by sharing with you two stories, both of which are true. And they're both stories about Pentecost. When I was in seminary, um, I had the chance to go to Zimbabwe in Africa as part of an exchange program at the seminary. While we were there, we lived with African Lutheran families, and we attended school at the University of Zimbabwe in Harare. I was a shy kid back then, and I had never traveled outside of the United States. And it was truly an amazing thing to sit at the table with my African host family listening to them speak a language that I did not understand. But the most memorable part of the trip came that Sunday when we went to the Lutheran church in Harare. It happened to be the first Sunday in June, and it was Pentecost. And even though the entire service was in Shona, their native language, a language I did not speak, I knew exactly what they were doing because they were following the Lutheran liturgy. And even though the liturgy was the same, it was very different. Because in Africa, a lot of the churches don't have pews, and you never really sit for very long in church. In Africa, you sing, you dance, you move, you shout, and the service is never an hour. It went on, the vigil of Pentecost went on through the night. And the place was bursting with energy. As I watched the service unfold, it reminded me of that first Pentecost, with the disciples speaking in different languages, and yet they all could understand one another. And in that moment, I understood in a way I never had before that Pentecost is true. The language of faith, the language of God's love is universal. And even though our cultures were very different, our love for God was the same. And thanks be to God for the gift of the Spirit who drew us together as one church. Think about this as I share with you the next story. A few weeks ago, I was driving home from work one day, um, and I had to stop because I was following a school bus. As the bus stopped to drop off students to their homes, I happened to be paying attention to who got off the bus. There were six kids who got off the bus that day. Two of the six were Caucasian. Two were African. Two were Hispanic. Those six children live only one block from where I do. They are my neighbors. Remember how earlier in the sermon I mentioned the neighbors who would casually drop by our campfire? Could it be that on this day of Pentecost, that God might be now expanding our neighborhood of faith and asking us to do the same things as those earlier followers, to learn new languages and to be more bold at sharing the mighty deeds of God? Could those six children be the crowd looking for the fire of God and wondering what it can do. As you think about this question, I leave you with the verse of a song that I learned to sing so many years ago at a Bible camp in Onamia. In Onamia. It's called Pass It On. And it goes like this. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone. You want to pass it on. In these coming days of summer, as you light your own campfires, or even if you break out the family grill, may the flames remind you always of this day, 
the day of God's pouring of the Spirit at Pentecost. May the fire of God's love, which never goes out, set your hearts aflame so that you too can pass it on. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day for this day of Pentecost is hymn number 405, O Spirit of Life. I invite you to please stand as you are able, and together let us share our, the faith that we hold in common using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us unite our hearts and our spirits in a word of prayer.
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and that love has triumphed over fear. Together we pray for your church, for the world and all who are in need of good news. Gracious God, today on this day of Pentecost, we pray for the church universal, for its ministries and for the spread of the gospel. Shower your spirit upon Sunday school students, confirmands, and those newly baptized. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray today for the earth, our precious home. We give thanks for the diversity of plant and animal life on our planet. Empower us through your spirit to be wise and faithful stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious and loving God, we pray for the nations and for those who govern. Give those in authority understanding hearts that they work together to bring justice and peace on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for those in need around the world. We pray all, also for those who are in need of your hand of healing. We pray today for Harold, Skeeter, and Shirley, Joan, Cody, Kathy, Patty, Peggy, Samantha, and the family of Judy Stoke. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray today for this congregation and for its ministries. We give thanks for all who participate in worship, all those who serve and volunteer and give of their time. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, with the power of the Spirit, we also take time today to remember the faithful departed. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us in faith. At the last day, breathe the new life into our dry bones that we might feast forever with all the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. And most merciful God, into your hands, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And we will continue our worship with the offering and the children's noisy offering. Please stand as you are able. he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is ready and all are welcome. Holy Communion will be here around the altar. As you come forward, directed by the ushers, please take a cup with you. There is also gluten-free wafers available or grape juice if you prefer. If you are not able to come forward and you would like us to bring you communion, please let the ushers know. You may be seated, and I invite the communion assistants forward.
invite you to please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. His peace be with you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn for Pentecost, number 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.